Hi, this is Harry, the Project Risk Coach, and I'm wondering how often do you miss key activities in your projects that cause you and your project team a lot of difficulty later in your projects? Well, today we want to look at the topic of how do we break down your projects? How do we break those projects down into deliverables? And then how do we break the deliverables down into activities that you will put into your project schedule. Let's perform a breakdown. Sorry about that, wrong type of breakdown. Let's look at how do we perform a project breakdown. Now before we do, I want to distinguish the difference between deliverables and activities. A deliverable is any unique and verifiable product result or capability. So these are the things that we create during the course of our project or within a phase of a project. Activities on the other hand they are a distinct scheduled portion of work performed during the course of a project. Now, I like to think of activities as the specific actions that we perform to create the deliverables. For example, let's say that we were creating software, which is a deliverable. We would have activities such as develop requirements. We'd have an activity to develop a design, develop test cases. We'd certainly have an activity to complete the coding. So those are the types of activities that we would undertake in order to create the deliverable. Now it's important that we define all the work for a project. But I want you to understand if you have a large complex project, you will not likely be able to define all the activities in the beginning of your project. And therefore, you would repeat the work breakdown structure process in an iterative fashion. So why is it so important that we define the activities properly? Well, consider what we do with these activities. We sequence the activities we estimate the activities, we assign resources to those activities, we identify risks that are inherent to each of the activities. So it's really, really important that we break those deliverables down into the proper activities uh, because this is the essence of our project schedule. Now you can create your work breakdown structure with different tools. For example, you could outline a WBS in Word or Google Docs, a very simple way to do a WBS. You could also create a WBS in something like PowerPoint. It might look like an org chart. Uh, another tool that I use is a mind map. Uh, allow me to show you an example. So let's pretend that we have a software project. We'll call it the XYZ software project and we want to break this project down. So the first level of breakdown, we could use the project process groups, initiating process group, the planning, executing, monitoring, and controlling, and closing process groups. Then we could break down the initiating process group and we might say, well, there's two things that we really want to create while we're initiating the project and that would be the stakeholder analysis as well as the project charter. And then in our planning process group, we might say, here are some additional things that we want to deliver. We want a requirements document. We want a design document. We want a testing plan, a training plan. In the realm of project management, we might say we want to create the following plans, a schedule management plan, cost management plan, communications management plan, and risk management plan. 
Now, I hope you're beginning to see that as we're breaking down this project, that all of these items that we've listed so far are nouns. They're not verbs. Now, we'll talk about the use of verbs in just a moment when we define activities. But these are the things that need to be created during the course of the project. In the initiating process group, we might say we have development, testing, and training. With our monitoring and controlling, we might say we'll have status meetings in which we're going to do some variance analysis of our budget as well as our schedule. And then in the closing process group, we might say we're going to do a lessons learned or create a lessons learned as well as a document archive. So here's the breakdown, a simple little illustration of a work breakdown structure in a mind mapping tool. Now I happen to be using the tool mind node. Now there are a lot of different mind mapping tools and I would encourage if this is of interest to you just to do some research and find a mind mapping tool that would be good for your environment. But I love the graphical representation of the project and as I work with my project team and they see the, diff the different components and pieces of the project they can help me fill in uh, the blanks places in the project and it really helps to reduce the possibility of overlooking key things that need to be created during the course of the project. So now let's turn our attention to activities. All of these things are basically deliverables, although some of them are not in deliverables. The main thing we're creating in this project is the software. It's a lot of project deliverables, things that we would create in the course of the project that would enable us to create the software. But anyway, let's turn our attention now to activities. How do we break this down a little bit further so that we now have uh, activities? And I'll just start with this item, Project Charter. If we wanted to break this down further, we might create, have some uh, subcomponents here where we say write project charter. And we may say refine or edit the project charter. We may say approve or baseline the project charter. And we might say submit or let's say publish the project charter where we're sharing the charter with uh, appropriate stakeholders. So notice now that we've taken this item that's in noun form and we've identified these activities and each of the activities has begins with a verb. And these are the things that would end up in our project schedule. Now, I want to show you a different way that you might approach this. You could actually take any of these nouns and simply put a verb in front of the noun. So we just simply say create project charter. And that activity may be defined in a way that you know that it includes the writing of the charter the refinement or editing of the charter, the approval, as well as the publishing of the charter. That's completely up to you, but it's important that you've defined all the activities necessary for the project. Here's another one. We could take requirements and we could say develop requirements. Now we have an activity, something that we're going to assign to a resource or resources in the project for completion. We could uh, have this guy where we say complete development. And so you get the idea. Um, 
Either of those methods would work great. At the end of the day, we're looking for breaking down the work. And at the end of this, we have these activities that we would put into the project schedule. I hope you find this helpful. I'd love to know what tools you use and how you go about uh, doing your work breakdown structure. And if you have any questions about this, please let me know. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. You know, one of the key inputs into the WBS process is actually the project charter that we create during the initiating process group. And recently I published a new online course entitled The What, Why, and How of Powerful Project Charters, where I walk you through step by step exactly how to create powerful charters. I hope you'll check that out. And you can find that at projectriskcoach.com forward slash courses. You'll also find there a free course entitled The Intentional Project Manager based on my book that I published in February of this year. So I hope you'll check out those resources. Hey, thanks for dropping by. I look forward to seeing you again soon.